The franchise hot seat is for information and entertainment purposes and is not an offer to sell franchises. If the hot seat introduces you to a franchise concept that interests you, you must do your own due diligence before making an investment. Welcome to the Franchise Hot Seat. I'm your host, John Hayes, director of the Franchise Center at Palm Beach Atlantic University. In this episode of the Hot Seat, we feature an emerging franchise concept that will be evaluated by our dream team. At the end of the session, each member will score the potential of the concept by holding up a cold seat, a warm seat, or a hot seat. Let me introduce you to the dream team for this presentation. These elite executives, superstars in their industries and in franchising. CEO of United Franchise Group, Ray Titus. Co-founder of Crank Enterprises, a venture marketing company, Brian Margolis. CEO of Exploring Your Potential Ventures, Jennifer Cushell, and former president of Glass Doctor, Mark Liston. And now, sitting in the hot seat, Jennifer Schenk, co-founder of The Connection Exchange. Thanks to the Titus Center for Franchising and the Dream Team for this opportunity to present to the hot seat. I'm very excited to be here. I'm Jennifer Schenk. I'm one of the co-founders and chief connectors of The Connection Exchange. We're a membership-based welcome service, and we provide warm lead generation to our members. At The Connection Exchange, we strive to build better communities through better connections. Our mission is to create mutually beneficial connections between new consumers and the local providers of the products and services that they need to thrive. And we seek to positively impact the economic development and growth of our local communities. We're professional networkers, but we really prefer to be called connectors. And we're solving the problem of disconnected communities. We've taken some of the traditional elements of an old school community welcome service and brought it into this century with a technology foundation. This is an important part of what we do. We're local lead generation and we have a proprietary software that we've developed that we use to help us in our endeavor. We've scaled and we've opened multiple locations across our state. So here's some background about what we do and why it's so personal. I moved from Texas to Missouri in 2010. It was a hard move. It was a lonely time in my life. And I, not only did I struggle with making friends, I needed help finding information about my new home. I needed a doctor. I needed information about my kids' schools. I wanted to know which neighborhood to buy a home in. I really needed to find some good Tex-Mex. And since I had been a small business owner and entrepreneur in the past, I struggled to figure out how to start a business in a new state and what resources and business services that I could rely on here. After a lot of networking, I got connected to what I needed, but the idea that somebody should be helping new residents, and new entrepreneurs with these connections kind of kept at me. And so the Connection Exchange was born. Here's what our process looks like. We find new consumers, so new business owners, new general managers, new executive directors of a nonprofit, as well as new residents. And we encourage them to book a welcome visit with us. During that welcome visit, they receive a welcome gift. I brought some examples of what that looks like. So this is one of our um, business gifts. It's in the laptop bag and it's full of all kinds of great swag items. And what it really represents, though, is all of our members. So banks, accountants, insurance agents, anything that that new consumer might need as they settle into their new home or into um, their new business. By the way, virtual visits, thanks to COVID, have been proven very effective and efficient. Um, and during this welcome visit, that new business or resident is going to find out everything that makes their community great. Like I said, they're introduced to everything that they need. Banks, insurance, restaurants, childcare, the list goes on and on. They receive coupons and discounts. They learn about networking opportunities if they're a business owner and their city services if they're a new resident. After that welcome visit, our community connectors use our proprietary software application to connect our member businesses, so that bank, that insurance agent, to the new consumer. And we provide comprehensive data that fills their sales pipeline with warm leads. Our members love getting these warm leads into their email inbox on a daily basis. 
We currently operate in three locations across the state of Missouri, as well as we have a newly launched virtual location, which serves new online business owners nationwide. Let's talk a little bit about our software. We developed this early on in our business simply to make our own process more simple. But what we found is that it made us much more valuable to our members because they saw leads from us as the welcome visits were performed. That way they could follow up quickly with the new business or the new resident and not have to wait until the end of the month or the end of the quarter to get a report. That's the way most traditional welcome services typically provide information back to their members if they do that at all. This also started our process towards a scalable business model. We have yet to prepare an FDD, but over the last year and a half, we've really focused on streamlining our processes and involved a lot of our key team members in that endeavor so that they can share their wisdom and what they've learned from doing welcome visits in their local communities. Our proprietary lead generation software is combined with our market proven processes. And we feel this can revolutionize the way that businesses, entrepreneurs, resources, and community services engage new business owners and new residents to their community. We're poised for national growth and we're excited to franchise. We see ourselves as the turnkey franchise solution for the welcome service industry. Our target market is new entrepreneurs that are skilled in forging community relationships that seek a fulfilling and profitable business model that they can work from home in this new normal. We also seek to serve an existing welcome service owner that's looking for a franchise model to back them up with a collaborative community and supportive technology to give new energy to their dream. Our feedback shows that we're providing a valuable service and we're happy excited to be able to serve more communities in the future. We're all in with our desire to work with the dream team and take the next step. We're willing to be coached, mentored, and work with a financial partner. Thanks again for this opportunity to present today, and I look forward to your questions. Well, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you, Jennifer, for uh, joining us here in the hot seat today. Um, you know, it sounds like you've uh, done some research in the franchise model system itself and checking off some boxes of a process. Um, there's a couple things that uh, maybe raise a little flag that maybe you could uh, e elaborate a little more on. Um, I'm looking at two two things that perhaps um, might need improvement, and one is uh, the branding as a whole, um, and then consistency. Uh, I'm questioning how are you going to manage that consistent delivery, uh, knowing that you're you're in essence relying on that local market to have different products or different you know, representation from, you know, territory to territory, it's going to be kind of a mixed bag, if you will. Uh, what, what's your uh, idea to overcome that? That's a really good point and something that we have done some, you know, some talk within our team internally about. Um, we'd love to see some national sponsors that can help us take uh, to, to that franchise level. Um, so there's a lot of consistency there with what's in each bag, how each bag looks, what's presented on behalf of those national sponsors. But at the core of what we do, we really are about local. And so we really do want to make sure that our local businesses, our local resources are also represented. And so then it comes down to training of our team members and making sure that they are providing consistently across the board um, a great customer service experience, not only to our new businesses or our new residents, but also to our membership. And they're giving um, that, that valuable uh, connection to them as well. Okay. So, you know, I, I mean, one of my first businesses I, I, I started was actually a media company a pu in the publishing business. And I'd almost compare this to that same sector where in essence, you're a media company. Um, you know, the only thing is I'm looking at the, you know, the digital stage that we're in in life and the way things are moving. And um, there's still something a little more uh, boutique -y and traditional in this in this approach. And I know you said you have some software and technology and lead generation component to it. Um, I, I'm going to assume that that might overcome some of those uh, challenges or, or create more excitement in it. Um, in terms of, you know, that uniqueness, uh, I'd be curious to learn a little more about what that is and, and how you're going to monetize that itself. Um, you know, it, it, do you have uh, some ideas of, of, you know, in terms of the projections or current sales that, you, that you're seeing and where's your revenue coming from? 
Great points. So yes, we are a marketing and advertising medium for our members. That's that's really what we are, and that's what we consider ourselves to be. Um, and we understand that there is, you know, what we're doing is a very personal, um, usually in person, but because of the pandemic, a lot of virtual visits. Uh, we find that that really we that the people that we meet with they want that one-on-one -on -one connection. They want um, somebody to kind of help mentor them and guide them. And you just don't get that experience from, you know, uh, reading a blog post or um, watching a video. They want a person that they can go to to ask those questions about their new community or guide them in the right direction as they open up a new business endeavor in a community. And so we've had a lot of success of people saying, I'm so glad that this exists and that I don't just have to get everything off of you know the website um so sure. i think if you're gonna um ultimately break through uh to that next level right uh from what i see right now you have a, a good a, a good concept uh, you know I'm, i certainly think there's opportunity there uh from a branding perspective um i i it's very localized which i know is part of the the focus of it but if you're going to start talking about scalability and especially building relationships with the national brands to make sure that there's that consistent welcoming, uh, there's a disconnect, at least for me, in what I'm seeing in front of me and where potentially uh, you would want to go with it or where it needs to go to, to fit that franchise model. Now, there's things that can that you can do to, to get there, um, starting with branding, first of all. Um, I think you got to really work at looking at, you know, uh, not just from a visual perspective, but looking at your audiences, looking at the messaging, um, certainly making sure the visuals support that as well. Um, I think there's a, a, a big gap right now in terms of where you're at and where you want to be in the franchise model. I think you've got a great business on a local level. I think you can, you know, burn and churn and, and, and bring in revenue from a media company type of perspective. Um, I think you have all of that going for you. Um, I think what we'd have to do is really work with you in, in how to bridge that gap, you know, from where you are currently in that local level and what it'll take to really get, even before you begin the franchise concept and, and, and model, uh, which I'm sure Ray can touch on a little more, before you even begin that, I think we got to work on I'm not necessarily saying your proof of concept, but creating that image and that perception of what it could be tomorrow on a scalable level. So that's just some of my two cents there. And, um, you know, I, I, I really think you, you, you have opportunity and potential. Uh, there's going to be a lot, several tweaks that are going to be needed to get to, to that, that finished stage there. I love those thoughts. We're definitely open to taking those steps and doing that hard work to uh, figure that out and get us there. Thank you, Brian. Jennifer, I, I uh, would second what Brian's saying. I think there are several steps that you, you we need to get a better understanding of. I mean, we don't franchise anything that hasn't been proven out. And it sounds as though you do have a lot of the pieces here. But let me ask a couple of questions on the, the monetary side and then a couple others. But one is, how are you making money? Who do you charge and what do you charge? How do you make money? That's a great question. Yes. So we have a model where we're charging a membership uh, fee annually to our members. They join us uh, just like they would a different association um, and allow us to, you know, network, connect on their behalf. Um, and then they also pay us by the lead or by the welcome visit that we provide to them. So that's a monthly charge. So we have both that kind of income coming in monthly as well as annually. Um, and then we um, we know that that we, we need some structure to that because different locations pay different things for things like radio advertising, television advertising, billboards. So uh, because we do consider ourselves a marketing and advertising medium, um, that's kind of, you know, been something that we've struggled a little bit with um, our St. Louis locations. We charge more for than in our mid-Missouri location, for example. So membership fee runs from what to what? So uh, $1,200 a year is, is, is kind of our average membership fee. And then we're at $5 a visit per $5 member. $5 a lead. It's a lead yes, per lead, lead that's given. Whether the person buys Correct. anything or not, it's a lead. Correct. So, and, and how do you find the people, the new consumers that move into the area? 
So that's kind of our secret sauce. We have lots of different ways that we do that. We do buy some data. Uh, we work with a lot of real estate agents, um, mortgage companies, but we're trying to find them just as soon as they um, get to you know the area or that they're looking to the area. Uh, we do a lot of uh, Facebook groups and posts um, trying to you know funnel them into our process. On the new business side, um, you know. We've got a lot of people that will send us, hey, I saw this coming soon sign, or my friend is opening up a business, you should know about it. Um, and of course, we utilize our business license list as well. And lastly, for me, and then I'm going to pass it over to the other Jennifer here, um, is uh, grand openings for businesses. Have you done any grand opening events for a business, or are you just like the welcome to the neighborhood connection? Uh, but have you thought about doing grand openings. So that's one of the fun things that we did before um, the pandemic hit. We would have uh, quarterly socials and those were times where all of those new businesses got to introduce themselves to each other as well as our membership. And uh, those were kind of a grand opening for those new businesses that were in attendance. Um, we, we utilize our chambers of commerce. We work alongside of them. So a lot of times we're, you know, introducing them to our chambers, letting them be a part of that process and doing a ribbon cutting grand opening with them. Uh, we're trying to get really into that business before uh, they open their doors, before the community knows that they're there. I mean, I've been with a hard hat on uh, touring a building as it's being constructed. Those are some of my favorite welcome visits to do because we're, you know, we're able to share that information very early on with our membership and let them know that something new and exciting is coming. That's great. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, I have a couple questions. First and foremost, I love the concept and I love the model. And it sounds like you've done a lot of work um, and really built a substantive strategy and model that can be replicated. I think that's really solid. You know, one thing that you said, um, one, one question, one of my first questions is what is, how would you describe your target market right now for, for new customers? For new franchisees or for yeah, customers who would buy your product. Okay, so for new members to yeah. our gift. So um, we are looking for not necessarily the big, um, you know, multiple location business that has lots of salespeople. We want kind of that medium sized business that's still hungry. They want leads, uh, they want them to be warm, they want to share them with their sales team and uh, them, them to be able to develop that relationship. Um, all the way down to a small business that's maybe it's an owner or a couple of people on their staff and uh, they need those introductions to grow their business. They want those leads uh, coming in. Um, on our business side, that's anything from, like I said, a bank, an accountant, an insurance agent, a bookkeeper um, to, you know, chamber of commerce, um, SCORE, uh, small business development center, any of our partner resource uh, entities that we utilize as well. And then on our new resident side, it's things like a mortgage company, restaurants, coffee shops, boutiques, um, and then our school system as well and our city services. So you have a lot of addressable opportunity in your market. One of the things I'd really encourage you to do is tighten up that focus. Okay. Narrow down your focus and get much more specific about who your target audience is. Um, your product market fit is going to be so incredibly important because you have a small team, you don't have a lot of money to spend, and your success in the early stage is based on your ability to be most efficient with your resources and your time. Um, so product market fit, I would say, is really important. I think you want to look very carefully at who are the most likely buyers, the low hanging fruit for you. Right now, I think you're looking at mom and pop businesses. And I think you're probably looking at first time entrepreneurs um, and professionals who are new to the space. The reason I say that is because if you start getting into multi people who have been entrepreneurs many times, they've been entrepreneurs in their community or even demographic changes, Mm -hmm. um, are going to impact you because when you start dealing with uh, teenage businesses, 20 something companies, you're dealing with an audience that doesn't like swag unless, I mean, well, no, they like swag, but they have very, very particular ideas of what that means. And also their sure. idea of marketing is very different than it is in the more traditional format, like you said. 
marketing today is on Instagram and on uh, Clubhouse and TikTok. And so when you're looking, I mean, you have a huge population of young people who are building companies right now. And I think as you know, back to Brian's point, as you really package yourself to grow nationally, even internationally, and, and get a much wider audience, I think you're going to have to look at the different segments of business starters that you can welcome. I'll never forget one experience I had. One of my biggest mentors was the founder of Subway. And I'll never forget, he was leaving a conference and about to hop on a plane. And we were probably, everyone in this room was probably at that conference, believe it or not. But um, he, was, he took the swag bag from the conference and I watched him go through it and, and put all, make these piles. And 90% of the stuff in the swag bag went into a pile that immediately went into the trash, including the bag itself. And I realized at that moment that I wanted to be far more judicious with the money I spent as a company in branding us. And also I started doing the same thing at conferences because I ended up with tons of junk bags in my, in, my, um, in my house. So one of the things that I really say is take a cue from the Hollywood swag bags. Look at what the, the really cool stuff is that everyone's glomming to get their hands on. See how you can make what you have even more fresh, even more relevant as you hit different levels and de demographics. And, and, and really just always focus on that. How do we keep it fresh? You know, and I think that expertise talking to people like Brian and and, and Naaman, who are her really experts in branding and packaging concepts, making sure that it's not just another pen case. It's not just another, you know, um, hand sanitizer like you don't want to fall into the junk bag side. And I think also, like Brian was saying, your use of branding is going to be essential beyond words because you have a beautiful logo, but if you put it too big on a bag, people aren't gonna carry it around and they'll throw the bag out and you've lost your opportunity. I would say use your brand very strategically, make it visible, but don't have it take over. They're not, people don't wanna be walking billboards, you know? So that's gonna really impact, think about that user experience when they grab that bag, when they get that content, because you're putting a lot of time and energy into that. And that really is the core of your, your business. I think your model is outstanding. I think you've, you've really taken a sophisticated approach to understanding the business itself, the technology, building some proprietary processes that I would really look at all the packaging and the touch points with your audience closely. Thank you, Jennifer. I really appreciate that. And you're right. People do make stacks. So when we're doing a welcome visit in person, that is something we typically see. What is going to be kept? Where is it going home? Which items are going on their desk to be used? And so we do make a, a great attempt to work with our members as they sign on with us of what they're going to provide and that it's going to be something that is used and not just thrown away. Um, the other thing that I wanted to address there is with our new virtual location that we have opened, we're providing a digital gift. So it's all coming through after they attend a live webinar um, straight to their email inbox and a link to a PDF. And so they are getting um, discounts and coupons and things that they can utilize in terms of free consultations or free coaching sessions, whatever that looks like that the member has provided in a digital form. And so that's another great option that we have going forward that we can package that, uh, that digital gift instead of it maybe being an in-person um, gift. And that's one of those things that the pandemic has taught us that we've learned through this. Well, I'm excited to pass you on to Mark Liston, who is an absolute expert in this space and fabulous beyond words. So Mark, take it away. Thanks, Jen. It's always, always so good to be on a panel with you. This is one area that I actually know about. I spent many years at Valpac and my wife spent many years at Valpac and she ran the largest Valpac operation in the world of Los Angeles with 70 sales reps. So as we talk about it, it, this, what you're doing, reminds me so much of Valpac. It really does. Except when I go through your website, I'm confused. With Columbia, it looks like it's B to, to C. When I look at St. Louis, it looks like it's B to B. And I can't figure out if I'm a franchisee and I was in charge of franchise sales at one point at Valpac, how your franchisees are going to make any money because what they're going to walk into is a pure sales job. 
and it's a one-man sales job, and they probably won't have a lot of salespeople working for them. Now, it's a great one-man sales job that can have a great income just working out of the house and working as many hours as they want, but it's hard. It's, it's just so hard. And, and I think about the, com the competition that you have, whether it be BNI, whether it be the Chamber of Commerce, whether it be Valpac, whether it be a, a variety. And I've got some friends that started up businesses just like yours for new consumers, new homeowners. And I knew how hard it was for them. So I'm looking at that side and going right back to what Ray said on the financial side, how do you sell a franchise to somebody unless they really feel they're going to make, what is it, Ray, $100,000 quickly? I mean, I mean that's, that's a magic number, but that's the number for some reason people, entrepreneurs want to make. If I can make $100,000, it's going to be a while, I think. So you have to look at, especially your website, to attract people. On, are you identifying how they make money on B2C? Because I'm, I'm assuming that consumers don't have to pay for it. They're not, that's not part of the model. That's so correct. Consumers a free welcome looking, visit yeah. to the consumer. Yeah, just like Felpack franchisees. So theirs is B2B. That's exactly what theirs is. They're selling advertising. You're selling advertising. You know, you're so selling coupons, really. And that's what Felpack did. So knowing that business pretty well, what everybody has said, you, you got to identify it so you can attract franchisees. So you can attract that they can actually make a lot of money and then explain to them how they can. And that comes back to how you're making the operation run, especially a second operation in St. Louis, because that's kind of what you're going to have to be doing. I mean, the ones you can do hands-on are in Columbia, but that second operation in St. Louis, you've got to prove to somebody that this can be very viable for them. And that's what I think you've got to really identify, like Jen was saying, how are you going to do it and how much money can you have and how can that, how can you find that entrepreneur that wants to represent you? Absolutely. Good so, points. So Jennifer, you've got a, a lot of great advice on the table. Um, you know, when I'm sitting back and listening to what um, Ray, Mark, Jennifer, what they're all kind of addressing, uh, I a hundred percent agree with them. Um, now, here's the thing, in, in my seat, I'm kind of the, the branding guy from, from what I see, and, and that's where I really kind of just drop off completely. And, and all of the challenges that they're calling uh, to your attention, I don't think you can even come across that until you fix the brand. I, I go to your website, I look at the brand, I look at the logo, I look at the design, I look at everything, um, and, and I'm losing the credibility there to, to invest and be part of something. and and to grow that. So, you know, when I'm looking at, uh, you know, how I'm feeling here, I don't want to necessarily say that I'm completely cold because I do agree with the fact that there's some potential here if we work on the brand. And if we do that, then I'd say I'm feeling a lot warmer um, and that we can really begin to work and coach and, you know, get involved with the, the, the business side of it to really grow it into potentially that franchise model that you're seeking for. Ray, what do you think? Well, thanks, Brian. Uh, Jennifer, I think it's a, it's a good idea. I think personally that I would love to see a shift in your business uh, uh, strategy. Um, I think it, it, it needs to look at the business side more like uh, whether it's promotional products and getting into selling some of those things or grand opening ideas or other ways to make money and to bring in revenue for the franchisees. Overall, uh, I mean, I, I like the name. I do think uh, Brian's right about the branding and, and uh, Mark's right about the inconsistency in the website and, and what have you. So I, I think you guys still haven't figured out what you want to be, whether it's virtual or local or however you want to do it. That's Please don't take that as a knock. I don't mean it that way. But I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm warm. Um, I'm not on fire on it. I think there's, for me to get on fire on it and, and really hot on it, 
there has to be some large adjustments in the business strategy. I, I, I have to say, I'd li- again, I like the concept. I think it's, I've been a small business owner my whole life. I, I love when people reach out and want to help you. I think we all are in this business of mentoring because we realize how valuable it is when someone shows up and says, I care. Um, how you do that really can make all the difference in the world. But it's also very a delicate balance because if you show up in the wrong way, you could end up like a salesperson. And mm-hmm. I really worry about you guys coming across as salespeople. Um, I think there's a lot of room for very, very quick adjustments and tweaks that will make you far more compelling than you are right now. But the core of that business is there. You guys have some great expertise. I worry about the freshness. I worry about how you're showing up. Um, I think, again, that all can be changed with the right expertise. But I think if you're open enough to evolve right now and and really cross this chasm, you could do a lot of beautiful things. Uh, It it is gonna take a deep look at the brand, at the, at the, the material, your packaging, and how you're giving that to people. Um, there's a lot of room for growth and I would highly, highly recommend that you do a competitive analysis right now, not necessarily about the businesses that are delivering, um, welcome kits, but what swag bags look like across the board from the ed tech space, from Hollywood, from college entry, you know, from, uh, moms, you know, getting packages with newborns, look at every way that people welcome someone new into a space. And also look at your demographics very, very carefully because who is your, what is going to turn on your 20 year old buyer, your 20 year old welcomee, your 30 year old, your 40 year old, get that down because your ability to be fresh and relevant to all your different demographics is going to make or break your business. I'm going to give you a warm. I think you have a lot there, a lot to build on. I would keep going as hard and fast as you can, but surround yourself with great people and take that game to the next level. I'm a lot like you, Brian. I know what it's like to go out and sell advertising. I I didn't have to do it, but I worked with new franchisees. That was one of the things that I did. I was in charge of new franchisees, getting them off and running and how hard it was because they thought it was so simple. When it comes to your, your doing this online only, Jen, Jennifer, I should say, <laughs> used to call it Jen, Jen. I don't think you have a sniff. I, I don't think you can call an advertiser today unless you've got a magic name. And Valpac did. I mean, they did a ton of business nationally. So I know how having the big name, how tough it, it still was. Now on the other side, We just bought a condo in Florida on Thursday. We're going to move to an area, I don't know a dentist, I don't know a doctor, I don't know anybody to fix my car. And every move we've had along the way, we had the same situation and it's hard. So what you're doing is wonderful, it's absolutely wonderful. But we've got to get you, like everybody else said, identifying it, understanding, and really having a finite ROI so you can sell franchising. And because of that, I'm with the rest of it. You got a great shot. Guess you got a, a great team helping you. So there you have it, uh, Jennifer. I mean, look, at the end of the day, uh, I think we all agree. Uh, you've got, you know, the drive and you've got, you know, the, the passion to keep plugging along and move forward in the right direction. Uh, overall, it seems like you're very warm in the hot seat. There's some things that you can be doing, obviously, to take it to the next level. Um, you've heard the advice here. Uh, some great words of wisdom all around. Uh, I certainly wish you the best of luck, and I hope to one day uh, get one of those packs near in my neighborhood, and um, you know certainly prove me wrong. Uh, and uh, you know we'll we'll be seeing you very soon in the uh, in the franchise lane. Okay. So from all of us here, thank you very much, and wish you the best. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it being on. Thanks for joining us for the Franchise Hot Seat. And remember, our purpose is to inform and educate. We are not selling franchises. Do your homework before investing in any business. Franchising is a powerful methodology for business ownership, and it may be the best way for you to own a business and build personal wealth. But franchising is not without risk, and it's not for everyone. 
Some quick thank yous to our sponsors. Since its founding in 1999 by IFA Hall of Fame honoree Tariq Fareed, Edible has been at the forefront of supporting franchising and entrepreneurship as a path to the American dream. Support your local Edible franchise outlets. Transworld Business Advisors, the world leader in the marketing and sales of businesses, franchises, and mergers and acquisitions. They've got 240 offices worldwide. Accurate Franchising is a full service franchise consulting and development company that assists brands with developing franchise business models along with assisting existing franchise brand expansion through franchise sales and services. Midas Auto Repair, founded in 1956, has grown to over 2,100 locations worldwide. They're ranked number one in their category by Entrepreneur Magazine's Franchise 500. Since 1962, customers have trusted Big O Tires for their automotive needs. Big O Tires is expanding in your area as it continues to add to its base of more than 450 locations nationwide. You want to sit in the hot seat? Visit Titus Center for Franchising.com and let us hear from you. I'm John Hayes, leading the Titus Center for Franchising, where we're educating the next franchise generation.